We're live. We're live. Okay, Yona, you can start. Okay. Hi, my name is Yona Grosso and I'm the student council president. Today we're gonna to be making challah. We all know that women make challah and not the men, but why? We find that Zara Menu was famous for three things. There was always a cloud over her tent, the candles she lit stayed lit from week to week, and the dough she baked always had a special blessing and it was always fresh and abundant. The reason why these three miracles took place in Sarah's tent is because in a certain way, she made up for Chava's mistake of eating from the tree of knowledge and giving some to her husband. One of the main punishments from the tree was that it will be very hard to make bread, and because of Sarah's righteousness, some of that harshness was relaxed. Therefore, Jewish women were given the honor of following in Sarah's footsteps. Shabbat shalom, gemar Khatimatova, and thank you. Next, I'd like to introduce a mother in our school who makes a huge impact on the Jewish community all over the world. Whether it's in Columbus, Israel, or right here in Miami Beach, she is someone who is a great example for all of us of a strong Jewish community leader. Hi, everyone. I'm Lindsay Schottenstein, and I'll be teaching you how to make challah, and we'll be doing braids and different ideas today. I wanted to start with the three mitzvahs have been granted especially to women. The laws of family purity, the mitzvah of challah, that is removing a portion of the dough, and the mitzvah of lighting Shabbat candles. Each of these mitzvahs, the Midrash tells us, were given to rectify Hava's sin when she allowed herself to be tempted by the serpent. Of the mitzvah of Hala, the Midrash tells us, why was she given the mitzvah of Hala? Because she corrupted her husband, Adam, who was the Hala of the world, and so she was given this mitzvah. The soul of every woman contains a fragment of the neshama, the soul of Hava, the mother of all life, whose sins brought much suffering to the world. Therefore, as a Jewish woman, we have been given the ability and privilege to repair her error and rectify her sin. Many people may wonder why it's so important and fulfilling to make challah weekly. You can buy challah, it's available at many groceries and bakeries, and sure, they are delicious. But I would like to explain to you why I find the mitzvah of making challah something that I choose to do because it connects me to the generations of Jewish women all the way back to the Eve in the garden. It provides for me the opportunity to give to my family, friends, and community something that I've made and is very important to me at the same time connecting to my spiritual side. My home is filled with smell of baking bread that reminds everyone that Shabbat is coming. If you walk into my home on any given Friday afternoon, you will hear the music playing and find me in the kitchen kneading the dough and dancing around. My days and weeks are always filled to the max with all of my responsibilities of my family and life. But I take the time to pause and do something that is so special and meaningful. I travel with my challah out of the freezer or make a batch wherever I am. No matter where I go or whenever I am, it transforms a place where Shabbat happens. Cooking has the expression that two people can make the same recipe and the results may be different. This can be because of the intent of the person as he or she makes the recipe. I put my heart, soul, and love into baking hollow, and I'm always in the moment. When I hold the dough and make the braids, I am filled with the gratitude for all that I have and I am able to accomplish. Seeing the finished outcome and giving them out makes me feel proud to be a Jewish woman. I hope in this time that we spend together this morning, you will understand why it is so important to me. So now we're gonna start the process of making challah. So everybody can, we start with, I take four packets of the Fleischmann's active dry yeast and I put it in the mixer. If you don't, you could use a Bosch mixer or a KitchenAid or you can just mix by hand also. So I'll cut these open and put four inside and then I'll take four cups of warm water, hot enough that it will activate the yeast, but not too hot for a baby's bath. And you can test it on the palm of your hand. Oh, 
Also, um, because I can't answer any questions, because it's not, it's a live stream instead of a Zoom, if you have any questions, you can ask any of the eighth grade girls, you can text them, or you can text me at And then add a tablespoon of sugar and it will activate the yeast a little faster and just make it a little sweeter. Now we're gonna let it sit for five to seven minutes. Do any of the girls have any questions so far? And you'll slowly watch the yeast congeal together and clump together. And then you'll know when it's time to start adding the other ingredients. upgrade what we have so we don't have to purchase brand new ones? No. I mean, first of all, I didn't look. Oh, you waiting for me? Hi, everyone. It's so nice to see you guys. Uh, I want to give a special thank you to Lindsay for baking challah. Um, I understand you're not local, so I, I, I'm i going to forgive you for not dropping off um, some challah before, before, before Shabbat. Um, it's really, really nice to see so many of our students uh, working and baking challah. Very, very special. Um, and thank you um, to uh, Mrs. Werdeker and Mrs. Lucero for helping out. Um, yeah, I would say challah is, is such a, it's such an integral part of the Jewish people and the fact that you could, that you have opportunity to make something so holy and so, um, so beautiful every single Shabbat to bring to your family is really just um, fascinating. Um, and I, I was thinking about it as we're entering into Yom Kippur with Shabbat Shuvah, um, which is, this is the Shabbat, which is dedicated of, of Teshuvah, of, of returning back to everyone. I think, you know, taking time to return back to, um, to baking challah, which just goes back all the way to, to Sari'i Menu, is such a great way to enter into the day um, and enter into to Shabbat, to enter into Yom Kippur. 
um, as the Shabbat parsha is Hazinu, which is about a special song and written it in a, in a very beautiful way in the Torah, as we're singing and baking into, into Shabbat is a great way to enter into Yom Kippur. Um, and it is my bracha to give every single one um, on this call, everyone who's watching, that you should have a gemar chatima tova, you should have a great sealed and good year, a healthy year, a year uh, where we all get to come back to school on October 19th. And for those who um, like to stay at home for as long as they want to feel comfortable, stay home. But a year where everyone comes back to school, we get to see everyone back on campus. And we wish that this pandemic comes to an end and anyone who needs a refuah shalema that you are davening for when you're making this chala should have a complete refuah shalema. Hi. I think we're ready to start adding our other ingredients. So next, take two cups of sugar and then pour them in. And then one and a half cups of vegetable oil. The vegetable oil just makes it a little sweeter. But if you don't have vegetable, you can use canola. You can use other kinds of oil too, it's okay. And then three eggs, three large eggs. And I crack them in a separate bowl in case there's blood, throw them out, or, and also if there's shells. So if you see anything in your egg, please throw them out before you pour them in your bowl. So one, looks good. Two, three. And then I'm gonna use the King Arthur bread flour and I like to sift it. And so I start sifting it in the machine for a little bit and then I turn it on. So I'll use most of the five pound bag. I'll leave a little bit, one to two cups, the end, but you have in mind you're using the five pound bag um, just to braid it if it's sticky. And then in the middle, I'll stop for one second and I'll take one tablespoon of salt and pour it in. Now I'm gonna turn it on. Um, how much oil do I add? One and a half cups. Now I'm going to stop for one second, I'll let it mix, and I'll add the tablespoon of salt. How much flour? Um, use the five pound bag and just leave one to two cups 
left over in the end, just so you can, um, so in case it's sticky and you could roll it on your counter to breathe. But also if you're using by hand, take a wooden spoon and as you're putting the flour in, start mixing. And then as you're mixing, it won't be liquidy anymore. And then you could start using your hands. I'm gonna leave, there's a little, you can see a little bit left in the bag. Then I'll turn my machine on and grab the little excess, pour it in, and turn the machine on like really fast for just like a couple minutes. And then I'm gonna set this aside. I'll cover it with a towel and I will place it for an hour and a half to two hours, usually by the stove if you're cooking and the heat will make it rise faster. Or if you're somewhere where it's like a little colder, you can put it in the sun in the window, it'll rise faster. Or also temperature wise, you can put it in the oven with the oven off and just put some warm water, water underneath and then it will rise in a pan and it'll rise faster too. But if you have the time and everything weather wise and your kitchen is um, a good temperature, you could just set it aside for now. Um, I did make challah last night so I could teach um, some of the braids. And I have um, different topping recipes as well. So girls, when, you when you're finished, let me know, because then we'll talk about why we're gonna separate the hala and put the dough away, a piece of dough away, and we'll do some prayers um, for whoever needs it. But everybody, if you have a list, you could say it to yourself when we're gonna say it, and we'll say the prayers. Also, I refer to the mitzvah of hala book. I love this book, and it really tells you why you're um, making the hollow, why you're doing this, and it gives you some recipes in the end. But it's really not a recipe book, but there are great um, ways to braid. And it has the prayer in the front, so everybody knows. I'll clean my counter off a little bit. So I have this space. And as long as your counter is clean, you could use your granite or marble countertop to do your braiding. Um, or also you could use um, the sill pad. You could braid on too, but I usually braid on the counter and then I put on the sill pad to um, put in the oven. Let me know if and when you're ready and we'll start the next part.
Everybody almost ready? Okay. Okay, the mitzvah of Hala is mentioned in Bamid Bar. The mitzvah is the teeth of a portion of the dough that you need and give it to the Kohen. The Kohen would eat the Hala when he is free from any spiritual impurity, such as one who came in contact with a deceased person. Today, since the Kohanim are not clean from such a spiritual impurity, the Hala is not given to the Kohen. The dough, however, is forbidden to be eaten until the Hala is separated. Therefore, Hala is separated a little piece taken out to assure it's separated and burned to assure that it will not be eaten. The Sefer HaChinuch writes, it's in Mitzvah 385, man's life depends on his nourishment and most of the world lives primarily through eating bread. So Hashem wanted to give us a constant mitzvah regarding bread. Bread, as we know, has a special role in providing us with nourishment. No wonder Hashem gave us a mitzvah relating to it. The Sefer HaChinuch explains further that at the same time the bread is sustaining our bodies, the sanctity it carries after having been used for a mitzvah will nourish our souls. In his abundant goodness, Hashem wanted to give an opportunity to benefit from his blessing on a daily basis. As we eat bread every day, Hashem commanded us to separate hollow. In this way, we are given access to his blessings each and every day of our lives. Shortly, we'll make the baracha and separate the hollow. We will share these precious moments together. It is a time when we can pour out our hearts and request everything we need, whether a suitable spouse, health, peace in the home, financial security, or success for our children. The list goes on, but what is certain is that each woman tailors her special prayers to her personal needs and knows that for those few special moments in her kitchen, her father in heaven is near, heeding her words, listening to the whispers of her heart. Now we will say the bracha together and then take a piece of the dough to burn. So let's say it first, and then we'll take our piece out and we'll think about anyone who needs over few shalema. So girls, can everybody unmute themselves? Here, you, I'll get it. Okay. One, two, three. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu. Let me hold on one second. Let me cover it. Yeah, a little covering. Hold on. Are there the shell? I don't have it Okay, Take your piece and say, hooray, zu hala. And let's keep in mind everybody who needs a healing. And then take your piece and put it in the oven with a piece of tin foil. Okay, now we're going to get to the part of braiding. So everybody, so first we could start with the sixth braid. I'll show you different braids and then 
I'll show you how to make different toppings. So take six pieces of dough and lay them on the counter. Size that's around this size. Can everyone see? And sprinkle some of your leftover flour. And dip each strand in a little bit of flour and then roll it out on your countertop. They each should be around the same size. It doesn't matter which size, thin or thick, you could do whatever you want. I keep them on a little bit on the thinner side. Press from the middle of each strand out. So then you have six strands. You start with your, put three on each side and leave a middle. Start with your outer right hand strand and cross it over to the left. You're always crossing over. Take the left hand strand and cross it over to the right. And then take your middle, the piece on the left and it goes straight down the middle. So each strand is always coming out from the outside, crossing it over and bringing the other one down the middle. Take your piece from the left-hand side, cross it over, and bring it down the middle. I know it's hard if it's your first time, but you can call me and I can show you, and eventually we can be in person one day, but also you can look on YouTube or in a hollow book and I'll explain how to make it. So take your left-hand piece, cross it over, and put it down the middle. Take your right-hand side, cross it over, take the right piece and put it in the middle. Take the left, cross it over, put your other piece in the middle and keep going until you're at the end. And then push the two sides under and you have a six braid. I'll show you also how to do the um, a round hollow. It's also with six pieces. So make six different, six more um, round balls of dough. I'll also show you a three braid. Um, that I learned a trick that if you start the braiding in the middle, it'll come out a little better looking. Okay, so I'm gonna roll these again. I 
and this six braid for the for the rounds, it's like a tic-tac-toe board. Lindsay. Yes. I think you should film the gala so I, I and then if you want you could send it to me and I'll send it to everyone just so after when we're making it we could use the same like techniques. Okay. Also, I'll show you the end result. I have the hollas out, so I could show you the end result too. And then I'll teach you the different toppings. So you have three across. And three the other direction also. Make sure they're around the same size. So lay three on top and three below the other direction, as you see. And we're gonna go under and over like a tic-tac-toe board. Under, then over, over, under, over. So it looks like you're, it's like a tic-tac-toe board. And you'll braid the strands You'll braid each side, a little braid at the end with the leftover hala on each side. So you'll end up with four braids on each, uh, one on each side. And then you smush under the braids and you have a beautiful round hala. You tuck the braids under the excess and it makes a beautiful round hollow. And then I'll show you how to do like a three braid real quick. And then I'll show you the different toppings. So after, we'll let this rise. You'll cover it with a dish towel. You'll put it in a safe place. Um, for half an hour, then you'll do your egg wash. And then after that, you can add your toppings and I'll show you how to make different toppings. This is the dough I made yesterday and I put it in the fridge. I let it rise, I put it in the fridge and I let it rise um, another hour before I took it out. But if you could make the dough the same day, it's warm and it's ready and it's like really soft. So it's a little easier. But if not, you could do that, the fridge. So take the three strands and start in the middle for the braid. Start braiding down to the bottom one over the other, and then braid the other direction up. And then you have a beautiful same size hollow on both ends. So now I'm just gonna set this aside, my tray, and cover it with a dish towel. Here's the finished product with a six braid with the crumb topping, which I'll show you how to make.
Here's the round challah with the everything topping, which the rounds get very big in the oven. And here's another round with a crumb. So let's together, I'll give you the recipe for the crumb topping. And I also like to, um, if you're making, I also like to make a cinnamon sugar. So for the cinnamon sugar, it's gonna be a little different. Um, you have to, before you're braiding, you take each piece and I'll show you how, how to, um, egg wash that and make this cinnamon sugar. You have to, you have to dip it in because it won't stick in the end. So you, you can make either a round or you can make a regular braid and then tuck it under at the end. So let's do that first. So take, crack an egg so you have the egg wash. I'll teach you real quick how to do this. You still should have more dough left over. So let's just do a three braid and we'll make it really big. So for cinnamon sugar, all you have to do is just mix um, a, whatever quantity you want of cinnamon and then add the sugar and you could smell it before it even goes onto your home. So the easiest way to do this is to make your three strands. Take um, your tool to egg wash, your egg wash, your, and then egg wash the whole entire strand. and then you dip it in your cinnamon sugar. And I like to keep it in a Pyrex so it's self-contained, it doesn't get messy on the counter. And then do the same braid starting from the middle out for the three braid. And then you want to tuck it, then you kind of want to make it into a little circle because it's not going to stick, but you want to tuck it under. So then when you're baking it, it'll stick a little better. And if you keep it open, then the ends won't really stick because of the cinnamon sugar. So just make the three braid and then make it into like a little circle and then it should stick and you can tuck it under. So you have another way to make like a circle hala with the cinnamon sugar. And then last I'll teach you the crumb topping, which everyone really enjoys. 
um, for the for the everything. You can use um, Trader Joe's everything but the bagel or any other kinds. I like this Brooklyn original everything bagel has all the different seasonings. So for the sweet crumb, have another Pyrex bowl. Take three cups of regular flour. And you can use the king of any, any type of regular flour. One and a quarter cups of sugar. Three fourths cups of oil. One tablespoon of vanilla sugar. You can use any type of vanilla sugar. One egg. Egg. And one teaspoon of baking powder. And then with your clean hands, you can mush it together. If you feel like it's a little dry, you can add, you can see what else you need to add. But because of the baking powder, it'll make it crumble. That's a little messy if you want to wear gloves, but if you have clean hands, it's okay. And add a little bit more oil.
I'll share the crumb topping recipe also. But in the end, you have your crumb. So you'll let your challah rise for half an hour, do your egg wash, and then you'll put the crumb topping on right before you put it in the oven. You bake at 350 on convection oven. I like to use the convection because it bakes throughout. And usually after 15 minutes, I do 15 minutes, the hollow in one direction, and then I'll turn it after another 15 minutes. And then in a half an hour, it should be ready. If it seems like it's not, just leave it in a couple more minutes. And then you have your crumb topping. Does anyone have any other questions? I know we took a long time, but this was one of my first not in-person holidays, and I hope next time we will all be together in one room at the Hebrew Academy. Thank you. I mean, thank you so much, Lindsay. And uh, thank you everyone who who participated. It was um, it was really nice watching everyone and if you want to bring some over to the school, I'm a little bit hungry, so any, any challah would be appreciated. Um, this is all part of um, our campaign to lead like a warrior, to give like a warrior. I've never said this line before, but today we were raising dough for challah, and we're also raising dough money for the school, uh, which all goes back um, into our program that we've um, invested in through the safety and the technology and the enhanced scholarship. So if you have the opportunity to, um, to contribute to our Lead Like a Warrior, Give Like a Warrior program, it will be very much appreciated. So thank you so much again, Lachem from Lindsay, Lachem Love from Lindsay. Um, thank you everyone who participated and I hope uh, to see everyone soon. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom everyone. Hak Thank you. Bye.